Hello and welcome to Algebra 1, Chapter 8. Today we are starting uh, factoring. And factoring is going to be something really important throughout the rest of your math investigations. Um, and to factor means to write something as multiplication. And so we're so used to finding products. And so remember when we say products, you know, we start out with two numbers we're multiplying together. This number over here is the product. What we are going to do is we're going to take a product and work backwards and find these numbers over here, which are called factors. So to factor means to find the factors. Now, the ones we are going to do, there's only one option, so it can't be like 2 and 3 and 1 and 6. So hang on, we're doing it with a variable. So we're going to start today with 8, 1, which is monomials and factoring. So one terms, and we're going to factor them. So a little bit of review on some different types of numbers we need to be aware of. First of all, prime numbers. And remember, prime number is a whole number greater than 1 for which the only factors are 1 and itself. So we're looking at 2, 3, 5, 7, right? The only way you can get 2 is 1 times 2. Those are its factors, or 1 times 3, or 1 times 5. Those are their factors there. Those are prime numbers. Composite numbers are whole numbers greater than 1 that have more than two factors. So if you look at 4, 4 can be made by 1 times 4 or 2 times 2. So there are more than two factors there. Um, by the way, 1 is neither prime nor composite because 1 only has one factor. So we are going to start out by doing some prime factorization. And that means that we're going to express a whole number as a product of prime factors. Product being multiplication of prime numbers. And just to make sure that we're aware, factored form. Factored form for a monomial is when it's expressed as a product of prime numbers and variables and that no variable has an exponent greater than 1. So instead of writing x squared, we're going to write x times x. That is the factored form there. Okay, so we're going to start out by completely factoring 18x cubed y cubed. So I like to do what I would call it a um, factor tree. And what times what is 18? Well, you could, you could do 1 and 18, except that's not going to get you very far. Or you could do 2 and 9. You could do 3 and 6. And it honestly does not matter what you do. I'm just going to do 2 and 9. And so is 2 a prime number? Yes. So you're done with 2. Is 9 a prime number? No. So then you need to factor it further. So what times what is 9? Well, 3 times 3. And now is 3 a prime number? Okay. So you're going to go all the way down until the end of every branch are prime numbers. And then so to factor means to write as multiplication. So in numerical order, we're going to do 2 times 3 times 3. And if you check, that is 18 times so then I want to write x cubed out. It's going to be x times x times x. And I'm going to write y cubed out times y times y times y. So that would be the prime factorization of 18x cubed y cubed. OK, so if we look at this again, we're going to do another one here. Negative 66pq squared. So I need a to do my prime factorization on negative 66. And the first thing I would probably do is separate the negative 1 and the 66. Negative 1, we're going to consider prime. We're, we're actually we're just going to consider it the negative 1 that needs to turn this negative. All right, so 66 breaks down into, let's do 6 and 11. 11 is prime. So then 6 breaks down into 2 and 3, of which those are both prime. So once you get all primes, it's going to be negative 1 times 2 times 3 times 11, so make sure those are in numerical order, times p times q times q. 
All right, so the whole reason doing the prime factorization is because we can do the, use the prime factorization to find the greatest common factor. And this is the biggest number that they have in common, okay? So if we look at two or more integers or monomials, we are going to try to find their greatest common factor. And I know that that one did not go with that statement, but that's okay. It's still what we are doing. Um, so the product of common factors of two or more monomials when they are written in factored form, that is what the greatest common factor is. So this is what the greatest common factor is. The product of the common factors when they are written out in factored form. If they don't have any common factors other than one, they are said to be prime. So there, and it says relatively prime because they'd be prime relative to each other. So here it talks about three sides of a triangle, and we want to find the greatest common factor of the three sides. So we want to first do our prime factorization. So for each one, so let's break 12 into 2 and 6, and let's break 6 into 2 and 3, and those are prime there at the ends. So 12wz squared equals 2 times 2 times 3 times w times z times z. Okay, and I will write a different kind of z there because some of you don't like my cursive z. All right, so then 8 breaks down into 2 and 4, and 4 breaks down into 2 and 2, and now those are prime. So 8wz equals... 2 times 2 times 2 times W times Z. Okay. And 16 breaks down. I would do 4 and 4. And each 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. And those are prime. So 16W squared Z equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times W times W times Z. All right. So what we want are the greatest, are the common factors to all three. So what do they all three have in common? Well, I could say they have that two in common. They have that two in common. They have a W in common. And they have a Z in common. So that's what all three have. And if you go back to looking at what you just wrote on the last si slide about the greatest common factor, it said it's the product of the common factors. So my greatest common factor is going to be 2 times 2 times w times z or 4wz. That is my greatest common factor, the product of the common factors. All right, so we're going to find the greatest common factor one more time. First of all, you're going to do your prime factorization. So if we say that's 3 and 9, that's 3 and 3. Remember, you're going down to prime numbers there. So this becomes 3 times 3 times 3 times A times A times B. And then 15 is 3 and 5, both of which are prime numbers already. All right. So this becomes 3 times 5 times A times B times B times C. What are their common factors? Well, they both have a 3 and an A, and a B. That's all they have in common. So the greatest common factor is that product, which would be 3AB. All right, that's what I have for you for 8-1. Please let me know if you have questions, and if not, I will see you in class next time. Have a great day.